What's good creative fam, Brandon Washington here. And just a few weeks ago, I bought my dream camera. No, not the Canon C70, but the Red Komodo. If you're interested as to why, I did an entire video on that linked down below or in the card. But it seems like just moments after I ordered the Red Komodo that Canon did the unthinkable. They announced what, at least on paper, might be the best cinema camera ever made. A super 35 millimeter 4K up to 120 frames per second shooting, C-Log packing, ND having, mini XLR supporting, dual gain output capturing, super cinema camera, all for under $6,000. And well, I had just bought this cube. No, all jokes aside, I love my Komodo, but knowing that there was a Canon camera like this out there in the wild, especially with as long as I've been a Canon fan, and I'm talking Canon T2i long, I had to get my hands on this camera to test it. But apparently everyone else had the same idea because after putting my name on purchase waiting lists and checking all the rental houses, I was even so desperate that I was willing to buy the camera with the probability of returning it just so I would be able to get my hands on it. That was until I got a call from one of my go-to rental spots who had one on hand and said that they could ship it out. Now, I only had one demand from this camera. No, it wasn't image quality or ergonomics or anything like that. I needed this camera to do just one thing and that was make me not regret buying my red Komodo. Now, this is not my first video on the C70. In fact, my first experience with this camera is very well documented because it was an utter disaster. But it was through that disaster that I realized how great this camera really was. You can see the full video linked in the card or check the links down below again, but it was a complete disaster because I completely butchered the settings on this camera. I walked away from my first test footage with this camera having a plus 50 green tint. No, there's nothing wrong with your screen. This is really what the footage looked like. Complete trash. But after just about a bit of tweaking in post, I was able to bring back the footage and make it completely usable. Now, I won't say it looks as great as it would if I would have, you know, gotten my settings right, but this is kind of where things started to scare me. See, the one thing that the Komodo has over the C70 that's no hesitation is the fact that it can shoot raw. And as far as I'm concerned, that's one of the biggest letdowns of the C70. I wish it did have raw, but I understand that if Canon did that, this camera would completely obliterate their entire lineup of cinema cameras. But I kid you not, with white balance and tent ranges like this, I don't see why you even need raw. This was when I knew I might be in trouble with my Komodo, but this was just the first test. One really bad test, so it was time to go out and film with it again, and honestly, I wish I could say that things got better. See, for this test, I went out and filmed closer to twilight hour, and I needed to see what this camera could do, and it didn't disappoint. I will say, having all the physical buttons on this camera makes it pretty much dummy proof. Well almost dummy proof. I mean, obviously I had my issue with the whole white balance thing, but that could happen to anybody using this camera for the first time. But after you get used to the camera, the buttons really do make a difference. Also, when filming with ever-changing lighting conditions, those built-in NDs are massive. Simple button taps to dial in your exposure is just perfect. It would be fair to say that I was starting to fall in love with this camera, but I wasn't falling in love with the idea that what this camera was starting to make me feel. It was starting to make me kind of ask some difficult questions about owning the Komodo. Although I understood that the Red Komodo and the C70 were two cameras in two completely different classes, I couldn't help but start to question my decision. As the sun started to set, 
I decided to stay out a little bit later to test this camera in low light situations. And this is where things started to sort of change for me. Now, quick disclaimer, although I am about to take you through the whole low light capabilities of this camera, I will say that low light in a professional environment shouldn't matter. If you are considering this camera and you haven't invested in lightings, you're kind of doing it wrong. Unless you're like a documentary filmmaker, then I guess I'll give you a pass, but only a small pass. So buy some lights, okay? Just just buy some lights, it's worth it. It's worth it more than the camera. But back to the C70. The low light performance on this camera was actually very good despite it not being full frame. But it was in the dark where I discovered some of the C70's hidden little secrets. What, what I meant by that is, so when I went out and tested this camera, I invited out my friend Travis who also helps edit for me and we realized something very interesting about this camera. Now, how can I say this without getting demonetized or canceled? Um, Travis is lighter pigment than me. So you guys get what I'm trying to say, right? So for whatever reason, in low light, this camera would not autofocus on me with face tracking, but it would with Travis just fine. We did test after test after test. I tried it on random strangers and it worked with them without any hesitation whatsoever. Granted, they were a little bit closer in pigmentation with Travis than I am, but it really irritated me. Now, honestly, I really don't care about autofocus as I primarily manually focus for everything, but this is kind of a big feature for this camera. So the next day I took the camera out into the woods and I buried it. No, I'm just kidding. No, it's like I actually took the camera out into the woods to try the face tracking thing again and it worked without any problems on me. So clearly it had a lot to do with like the light that the sensor was actually gathering in order to make this whole thing work. Granted, I will still say it worked on Travis and that kind of pissed me off. But that aside, this camera was starting to check a lot of the boxes for me, but the time had come. The rental was over. It was time for me to ship the camera back, but no later than an hour after I shipped the camera off, I got a call from one of those local camera shops in the Texas area. I bet you can already tell where this is going. See, when I originally was looking to test out this camera, I had put my name on quite a few lists and in their situation, I put my name on their list to rent it, but I didn't realize that I had also put my name on their list to buy it. So when I got the call, this was probably the hardest call I had gotten all year. Granted, we were only about six days into the year at this point, but they asked me, did I wanna buy the camera? On top of that, they could have it shipped to me the next day. Granted, we were in the same state. So I sat back and thought through everything I had just went through. All the things I loved about the camera, all the things I didn't like about the camera. I thought about my beloved Komodo and what I was going to do. So I did what any rational filmmaker would have done in this situation. I bought the camera. <laughs> okay. I know, I know, I'm, and yes, I am keeping them both. Now chill, before you go nuts in the comments, I understand how blessed I am that I'm in a situation where I can purchase two of the most amazing cameras on the market, but it really is because I've been working my tail off, and I don't say this to flex or to brag, but the reason why I bring this up is just to say that even as an owner of the Red Komodo, by far, my inspiration-giving camera like it's the most inspirational giving camera I've ever had. The Komodo is amazing, but you can't argue that the C70 isn't a camera that offers damn near everything. I'm aware that not everyone can own both of these cameras, which is why I'm already in the works on a comparison video going over image quality, usability, and more importantly, which type of shooter should buy one or the other. I will say this, Although the Red Komodo is still my dream camera, don't get me wrong, it is. It is still my dream camera. If there has ever been a perfect cinema camera at an affordable price, I'd have to say that the C70 might just be the closest thing we've ever gotten. 
I wanna say thank you guys so much for watching this video and I hope that it's been helpful. Also, for those of you guys who stuck around to the end of this video, I'd like to say a special thank you and also give you a bit of insight on something new that I'm actually trying. I've signed up with Community in order to be able to text with you guys. Now, my number is 281-248 8075. Just text create a fam to this number. I'll have it down here and it'll come directly to my phone. This will make it easier for me to communicate with you guys directly because I'm on all the socials and sometimes I miss your comments and your DMs. So I'm hoping that this will make the process smoother. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to hit that like button or even consider sharing it with one of your friends who also loves cameras. Thank you again so much for everything that you guys do and supporting the channel and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.